Welcome back everyone, I'm Nick. This is Swiftful Thinking where we cover all things Swift and Swift UI related. And I hope you guys are ready to get focused because today we are looking at the at focused state property wrapper in Swift UI. Uh, it sounds much more complicated than it is. All this is is allowing us to programmatically either select or unselect a component in Swift UI. So this is mainly used on a text field, which is what we're gonna do in our example right now. Uh, but basically, before we had add focus state, there was no way to programmatically select a text field and pop up the keyboard on the device. But with focus state, we can actually determine and programmatically uh, pop up the keyboard by selecting a text field. And we can also move the cursor from maybe one text field to another text field, maybe to another text field. Uh, so it doesn't sound like something that is crucially important, but if your users are going through onboarding or typing in their name or something like that, using these focus states will just really enhance the user experience. So definitely something that you're going to want to know about, and we're going to walk through everything you need to know right now. All right. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, pretty cool video we have today. We're looking at the focus state, which is pretty new to Swift UI in iOS 15. Let's right click the navigator, create a new file for the code in this video. It will be a Swift UI view and let's call it focus state bootcamp. Click create, click resume to get connected here. So we'll start with a simple example and then we'll work our way up to something a little more practical in our apps. But let's start with a V stack, open the brackets. So let's start by adding a simple text field here. Let's open the parentheses. And we have all these iOS 15 completions now, which are probably making this way more complicated than it should be. Uh, I'm gonna stick with the iOS 14 completions. So I'm just gonna use the title, and the title I'm gonna use as a placeholder. So let's just say, um, add your name here, dot, dot, dot. The text, we need a binding string. So up at the top here, let's do at state private var. Let's say uh, username of type string, and we'll set it equal to a blank string to start. Let's bind to it with the money sign at username. And then I'm just gonna delete the prompt so that we have our initializer from iOS 14. Let's click resume here. We should get this text field on the screen. Uh, let's add some padding onto the whole thing of maybe 40. Let's give it a frame with a height of 55, a frame with a max width. Let's do infinity and maybe a background. Do color, color dot gray. And let's give it maybe a brightness of 0 0.3. So it's a little off white. Let's give it some corner radius of 10. And then maybe let's do some padding on the leading edge to push it in there. So, so let's get this into the simulator quickly. Let's take our focus state. Let's go to the app.swift file of our app here. I'm gonna make this the first app. I'm going to run this to a simulator. All right, so I have the text field here, and if we click on it, obviously the keyboard's gonna pop up. That's the normal behavior. Uh, but without any kind of focus state, which we're gonna get into, there's no way to click onto that text field uh, programmatically. So if, other than the user actually clicking here directly, there is no way to get that to initiate, to put the cursor inside that text field by writing code. So that's where focus state is going to come in. So on this text field, we are going to give it a dot focus. And, and we're going to use this focused with condition here. And you'll see that the, this needs to be a focus state with a Boolean value here. So we're going to bind to a focus state with a Boolean value. So up at the top here, let's create an at focus state. Let's create a private var. And this, of course, needs to be a Boolean. So let's call this... Uh, username in focus let's make it of type bool and we do not need to give it an initial value it's going to automatically register the value based on this text field so down here we're going to use the money sign username in focus to bind to it so the value of username in focus this boolean is going to be equal to whether or not that text field is currently clicked so right now in my app right now, it would be false. And once I click this, 
the value of the, the username in focus, focus state, is going to turn to true. And just as easy as it is clicking it, we can now programmatically just turn this to true. And if this is turned to true, because we are binding to it down here, the text field will then become in focus. All right, so on our screen, let's add a little button down here. Open the parentheses. Let's just do a title, let's say toggle focus state. And we're just gonna call username in focus dot toggle. Let's press play. Let's run this to the simulator quickly. And this is the cool part about the focus state is that we can programmatically put things in or out of focus. So if I toggle it, we can then get the keyboard to be clicked on. We can get the text field clicked on and that keyboard pops up. So we can pretty much programmatically now initiate the keyboard on the device, which will get incredibly handy as you start building apps. Again, I'm not clicking on the text field, I'm clicking on this button. And this button could be anywhere in my app. I've even seen a lot of people use this as like a submit button. So there might be a submit button here that will first check if there is a name added. And if the name is already added, then go ahead and submit. But if there is no name added, then put that text field into focus. So instead of displaying an error, you could direct the user directly to the text field that they didn't fill out yet, something like that. Uh, another cool thing we can do now is that maybe when the user got to this screen, the only thing on their screen is this text field because this is maybe the onboarding they're going to add their name here and we don't want to wait for them to have to click on to this instead we know as soon as they get to this screen we want them to be ready to just start typing in their name well we could do something like on appear and i don't think we can do it immediately i think we need to wait for the view to actually finish rendering so let's add a click little dispatch queue.main.async after Maybe now plus one, let's do half a second. And then in here, we'll just call self.username and focus and we'll set it equal to true. Let's run the app one more time. And now when the screen appears after 0.5 seconds, we're just gonna turn the focus state on. So here, the user just got to the screen and we've already got them clicked onto the text field. Keyboards already popped up on their device. They didn't even have to do anything and it will just make your onboarding that much faster. Let's keep going here. There's a little more advanced things that we can do. So uh, I'm going to copy this text field and let's just paste another one below it. This one, let's say, add your password here. And I'm going to make uh, different values for this. So I'm going to copy these two and paste them. This will do password in focus and this one will do password. We will bind here to the password and we will bind here to the uh, password in focus. All right, let's run this to the simulator just to see what we're working with here. All right, we got our name and we got our password. And let's add maybe a fake, let's add another button down here. Let's say maybe sign up and we'll add a control command space bar, access the emojis, because everyone loves a good emoji. And then we can add a little bit of logic here. Uh, so first, let's pretend like in our app, if the username added, if the user has added their name and they've added a password, then let's actually just sign them up. So let's say let uh, username, username is valid and let's set it equal to the username text dot is empty. So if it's empty, this will be true and then username should not be valid. So let's do an exclamation mark to make it not is empty. And we're gonna do the same thing for password. Let password is valid equals, let's just do password dot is empty. Maybe you wanna add, you're probably gonna wanna add more logic in your actual app, right? Username should be a certain amount of characters, no curse words, password should be at least maybe a capital letter in there or something like that. But for this example, we're just gonna say, if username is valid and password is valid, then we can just print sign up. We'll say else, and then, so if both of these are not valid, one of them is wrong, so first, Let's check username because it's on the top. So we'll say else, else if username is valid. 
So if just the username is valid, that means they haven't added their password yet. So then we're gonna say here, we're gonna say username in focus is false and password in focus is true. So if they already have their username, but obviously not a password, we wanna put the password text field then into focus. And then we can also say else. So if username is not even valid, that means they haven't added their username either. So in that situation, we want to then, let's update it so that the username is in focus and we don't need the password in focus anymore. So let's run our app quickly. And let's actually do some formatting quickly. Let's take the V stack, let's make it spacing of 30. And I'm just gonna hide this toggle in focus state because we're not using it anymore. Let's also comment out this on appear because we don't need it now. Uh, so let's get going here. So we have our screen back up. This is a plain screen. They have the username and the password and the sign up button. And maybe this user gets this screen and they say, you know what? I don't want to add my username. I don't want to add my password. Let's click sign up. Well, we added logic so that if they click sign up and their username is not even valid, it's gonna come down here and we're gonna put the username then into focus. So this user tried to sign up and immediately they're clicked onto the username keyboard. They get the, they probably get the gist that they need to add their username. So here I'll add my username as maybe Nick, let's do one, two, three, let's click return and then let's try to sign up again. And this time it checked that the username was valid. So instead of putting the username in focus, we put the password in focus. And now it knows that I need to add my password here. And then if we click sign up and both are done, we can get those printouts to the console. Uh, so a little bit of data validation. So this is great also if you had maybe a bunch of fields or a bunch of text fields and you wanted to, the user just had like a next button and they could just go to the next text field to the next text field. It is really convenient and we can even, if I delete both of these and a really cool thing here is that if a user is typing something in and then they click the button, we can automatically change that the cursor from one field to another. So you notice here that I'm clicked on this one field and it goes straight to the second one. So this could expedite any kind of form or onboarding because you can just move that cursor automatically. All right, we are going to wrap up this video quickly uh, with a little bit of logic because this is great that we have these two focus states, but it could get pretty chaotic if you had maybe a bunch of text fields on the screen. Maybe they had five text fields and it was password and username, and we don't want to create this at focus state so many times. It just wouldn't make much sense. So what we can do is create an enum, and I'll call it maybe onboarding form, onboarding fields, open the brackets, and let's give it a case for username and let's give it a case for password. All right, and what we're gonna do is I'm gonna comment out both of these focus states here. Instead, we're gonna use one single at focus state. Let's do a private var and let's call it uh, field in focus and it'll be of type onboarding fields. This should be actually onboarding field and we're gonna make it optional. So by default, there is no onboarding field that will be started in focus. And now when we use these modifiers, I'll comment this one out. Instead, we're gonna use dot focused and we're gonna look for the one with the equals here. So we can see that this again is binding to anything that is hashable. And let's click enter. And we wanna to bind to this field in focus, but the problem we're gonna have is that this focus state that we need here is going to need to be hashable. So this enum, let's just make it conform to the hashable protocol. Now we can bind with the money sign field in focus. And this, and this text field, of course, is for our username. So the field needs to be dot username. I'm gonna copy this and come down here. Let's comment out this focus. Let's put this back in here. And this will be, of course, the password. And finally, let's come down here. So this time when we get the username is valid, instead of this logic, let's just set the uh, field in focus equal to password. And down here, let's set the field in focus equal to the username. Let's click run one more time. I'll zoom out a little bit so the code stays on the screen here. And same type of deal, we can click the button, 
We can get the keyboard to pop up. I can type in my name. The simulator's acting a little wonky. I don't know why, but um, we can change the fields in the exact same way that we just had it, except this time we have our code is a little more condensed because we've created an enum. We have used one single focus state, which will be all of the possible fields, which is uh, hashable, of course, so that we can use it with this focused modifier. All right, guys, I will wrap up this video by just pointing out that passwords uh, should probably be protected. We shouldn't be able to actually type and see what the passwords are. So in this case, we should actually be using a secure field instead of a text field. So if I run it one more time, uh, we can see that the password field at least will be secured. So I can type in uh, my name and then if I type in my password, we can't actually see what I'm typing. So a uh, quick tidbit there, definitely use secured fields if users are typing in passwords or anything sensitive like that. All right, guys, you now know how to put text fields in focus, which is super handy, super powerful. Hope you enjoyed it. If you learned something in this video and you enjoyed it, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, leave a like and a comment below. And as always, I am Nick, this is Swiftful Thinking, and I'll see you in the next video.